let's do some examples with the Euler phi function, we call the totient function, and the idea of reduced residues. Uh, first of all, let's just be real low tech, not use any fancy theorems, just the definition, and compute phi of various powers of three. And it turns out that focusing on uh, the powers of a prime is a really good place to get a sense of what's happening with phi. Um, and composite numbers, things that have different primes in their factorization, uh, kind of come along in a nice way after that. So uh, we're going to calculate, um, let's just say phi of 3 first. Okay, that prime number. Okay, uh, it's just counting how many numbers uh, from uh, 0 to 2, basically, things that would live in Z mod 3 are relatively prime to 3. Okay, well, 1, so I'm going to make the list first and then just count it. Okay, 1 is relatively prime to 3, and 2 is relatively prime to 3. Okay, and so we get that um, phi of 3 oops, is just 2. Okay, and I'm going to write that as 3 minus 1 because that's pretty suggestive. Um, what's happening there is that it's a prime. It's really easy to be relatively prime to a prime as long as you're not 0. And anything less than 3 that's not 0 is going to be relatively prime. Okay. So remember another interpretation of this that they talk about in the section is why we're really interested in it. This is really counting how many congruence classes are, <clears throat> are relatively prime to 3. So for example, 4, you could say, wait, wait, why did I stop there? Why don't I say 4 is relatively prime to 3? Well, mod 3, 4 is just equivalent to 1. And 5, that's relatively prime to 3, but it's just equivalent to 2, so it's not really new information. 6, of course, is not relatively prime to 3. That's re not remotely new information because it's equivalent to 0, which is the absolute imp most impossible thing to be relatively prime to anything because 0 is divisible by anything. Okay, now what about um, phi of 3 squared? Okay, it's a little more interesting. Okay, well, so zero, of course, not one and two. Okay, so this is of course phi of nine, right? So let's just say it equals phi of nine. Okay, numbers relatively prime to nine. Now that's not prime. Okay, um, and so we're really thinking essentially representatives in Z mod nine, um, and we've already seen a lot of why these are. This is a really interesting question. These are the things that are going to be have multiplicative inverses in mod nine. Uh, where the cancellation property happens. It's really, really crucial when you work in a non-prime mod, which we're going to need to do for our last encryption thing. Anyway, one, two, so third, certainly not three, because that divides nine. Okay, four, five, not six. It doesn't divide nine, but it's got that factor of three in it. Seven and eight. Okay, so what did we do? We took nine numbers, and we took out the multiples of three. 0, 3, and 6 are the other things that don't appear in this. So that's, um, that's 6, and that's interesting that it's 9 minus 3. Okay. Um, oh, I shouldn't say the set equals the number. I should say the function applied to 9. Let me put a little period in between here. Okay. So now what's the next one? Let me put it in a little bit of a different display box. Okay. So phi of 3 cubed. Whoa. Okay. Um, I'm not going to list these all out completely, but let's see if we can just start to list them out and get the pattern. Okay, so we're going to have, of course, 1 and 2, but 3 is never going to work for any of these examples. Okay, but 4 and 5, okay, and 6 and 7. It's not 6, not 6. No multiple of 3 is going to work because it shares a factor with 3 cubed. Okay, 7 and 8. Okay, hello. And not 9, 10. 11, not 12, 13, 14, not 15, 16, 17. Okay, I don't want to be, I, I want to think about the pattern here, okay? So I want to imagine starting with all the numbers from 0 to 26, and that's 27 numbers, and then saying which ones aren't good, which ones aren't relatively prime. Well, because 3 cubed is a prime power, it's really easy to tell when something is not relatively prime to it. The only prime factor that it can share is 3. Notice how we're using FT FTA here, Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic, big time here. Um, so the only way it can go wrong is if it's a multiple of 3. So how many multiples are, of 3 are there? Well, the thing is multiples of 3 happen in a very regular pattern. Every third number is a multiple of 3. Of these 27 numbers that I could write down from 0 through 26, um, exactly a third of those 
are going to be multiples of 3. And so I'm going to be taking out 27 over 9. Okay. Or in other words, it's 27 minus, ooh, sorry, 27 over 3. I was anticipating something. That's a third of the numbers. 27 minus 9, which is 18. Okay. One more. Uh, let's do phi. I'm going to actually copy and paste a bunch of this. Phi of 3 to the 4th. Definitely don't want to list it all out. But it's, it's really the same idea. Okay. It really starts with the same list. Okay. It's just all the things that aren't multiples of 3. But now I go up to 80, which is 1 less than 3 to the 4th. Okay. So it's going to be 0 through 80, which would be 81 numbers. Okay. Minus. Okay, still the same deal. I'm going to be taking out exactly one third of those because they're going to be divisible by 3. And so that's going to be 81 minus 27, which is 54. Okay, and there's a nice pattern here. It looks like, okay, so that would be enough to do that, this kind of problem. But let's go ahead and generalize. This is exactly one of the things that, one of the patterns for the, with the totient function. It looks like if I have 3 to the m, I'm getting 3 to the m, that's everything. And then I'm subtracting off a third of those guys. Okay, and then it just depends on how I want to write that. Well, that's 3 to the m minus 3 to the m minus 1, the rule of exponents. And that's a perfectly good way to write it. The way the book would write it is factor out the 3 to the m minus 1. There's an extra factor of 3 in the first thing. And then a minus 1. That generalizes us really to any prime, any power of any prime in a pretty obvious way. So that's one example of calculating uh, the totient function, just by listing but then looking for patterns.